Okay, the first thing you need to do is get out your sheet of paper for this uh, review. This is only going to go for chapters 1 through 11. So let's go ahead and look at number 1. The question is asking if the relationship is proportional between x and y. So looking at the graphs, we're looking for a proportional relationship. So for the equation of proportional formation x is y equals mx. That means there is no y-intercept. So that means that your line has to go through the origin. Now looking at my graph, my line that goes to the origin looks like it's A, and that's the only one. So you shouldn't have A for this one. A proportional relationship is when your line is going through the origin on a graph. Let's go ahead and look at number two. Number two says, Point M is located at 4 and 6 on the party grid. Point M is translated 8 units to the left and 9 units down to create M prime. Which measurement is closest to the distance between point M and point M prime? So let's go ahead and plot point M. It says it's at 4 and 6, so it's 4 and 6 here. That's M. Then we're going to translate it. So it's 8 units to the left. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9 units down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here's my M prime. So my M prime is going to be at negative 4 and 1. So I just want to make sure that I translate correctly on my graph because I can't really see on mine. So my point was 4, 6. So 8 minutes to the left, that means x minus 8. And then 9 units down, so that's y minus 9. So if I do 4 minus 8, I get negative 4. And if I do 6 minus 9, I should get negative... I should get negative 3. So, of course, I didn't... I should get negative 3. So looking at this, I didn't really plot it correctly because I can't quite see. So I should have got at negative 4 and negative 3, which is right here. That's my m prime. Now, what's the distance from here to there? Well, I can't give you the distance from there to there by just looking at the straight line. It's going through the diagonal part pieces that are not whole pieces on my grid. So what I should have drawn is a right triangle. From here to here. Now I have my right triangle. So if I have my right triangle, I have my formula that I can measure my side lengths. That formula is called the Pythagorean theorem, which was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I my a's are my a's and b's are my lengths. So counting my a straight across will give me my a, my b, and of course the diagonal line, which is your hypotenuse, which is your C. So if I count my units for late A, I should get 8 units here, and then B should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 units there. So my A should be 8 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. So if I put that in in solve, or I solved it by hand, then in solve can solve it for you, you can find what c is. So then I'm just going to go ahead and put it in solve. And I get 8 squared plus 9 squared. 8 squared plus 9 squared. Gives me the 145, which is 12.04 units, therefore it should be 12 units for number two. Let's go ahead and go to number three. Number three, Cameron invested $15,000 in account that pays 4% annual simple interest. Tamara will not make any additional deposits or withdrawals. How much interest will Tamara earn on her investment at the end? of the three years. So, simple interest, it says it right here. Simple interest. Our formula was our simple interest 
equals our principal times rate times the time. My principal was 15,000 times my rate, which is 4%, times my time, which is 3 years. So when I calculate that, I should get about $1,800. That is my interest to be zeroed over the 3 years. So my interest should be A. Okay, let's go ahead and look at problem number four. Problem number four is saying that the aquarium is being filled with water. The graph shows the height of the water over time as the aquarium is being filled, which can be best described as the rate of change for the situation. So looking at my question that says, the height of the water increases 20 inches per second. The height of the water increases one inch per second. The height of the water increases 5 inches per second, and the height of the water increases 2.5 inches per second. Okay, so this is a proportion problem. It gives you your proportions. You're supposed to learn proportions. So looking at this, I'm trying to proportion straight my height over feet away. So if I'm looking at the back, it says my height. It's six feet high and it's away by three feet equals to the height of the building and away would be 18 feet. So looking at my answer choices, I should have thought B is my answer. But let's look at the ones that we didn't get. It's saying you have the man's height is three feet over the height of the building. Okay, you can do it that way. Then it says the building is 18 feet away over the man's feet away. Well, no. If you start with the man's height on this side, it has to be about the man on this side. You can't switch that. So that's why A can't be it. Number C says you have the man's height. The man's height over 15. Well, I don't see 15 anywhere on there, so that doesn't make sense. And then on D, you have the man's height over the man's distance equals the building's distance over the building's height. Well, that doesn't make sense. It has to be height over distance. So that means your building has to be height over distance. So that's why D can't be it. Let's go ahead and look at number six. The coordinate bridge shows parallelogram PQRS. Parallelogram PQRS is rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin to create a parallelogram P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime, which rules describes the transformation. Okay, so we're talking about 90 degree transformation. So for transformation, we have a 90 degrees, we have 180 degrees, and we have 270 degrees. Where you have 90 degrees for your x and y transform to where it's your y and then your negative x. Then you have 180 degrees of your x, y transform to where it's negative x, negative y. And then for 270 transformation, you have your point x, y that transform or rotate to negative y, then x. So looking at our question, it's talking about a 90 degree clockwise rotation and it wants in an algebraic expression. So we're talking about a 90 degree rotation and algebraic expression. So we're looking for our x, y transform where it's y negative x. You're thinking all of this is transported to 90 degrees. So that means your x and y are flipping. So therefore, the, our algebraic expression should be j. Okay, let's go look at number seven. The value of y varies directly with x. When y equals 75, x equals 1 half. What is the value of y when x is 2 and 1 fourth? So, when it says y varies directly as x, it's saying that y, y pretty much kind of, it's just whatever y is, x varies with it. So, does this look like a proportion problem to me? 
So this y in 75 over x is 1 half. And it looks like, what is the value of y when x is 2 and 1 fourth? So I don't know what this is. But I know my x is 2 and 1 fourth. So this is proportion. All I have to do is cross multiply and then divide by 1 half. So the term fractions, I'm just going to convert them into uh, uh, decimals. So the 2 and 4 is pretty much 2.25, and a half is 0.5. So we're going to cross multiply. We get 168.75, and we divide the remainder by a half, which is 0.5. And we should get about 337.5 in fraction form on a half. 0.5 is 1 half, so our answer is 337 and 1 half, which you should have got to keep. And again, this is clear proportion problem, okay? It gave you two, a y and x, a y, you don't know the y, and then an x. So that should have been your trigger that you should write proportion. A triangular prism and its dimensions are shown in the diagram. What is the lateral surface area of the triangular prism? In and square centimeters. Okay, so surface area. We have total surface area of a prism says that our total surface area was surface area equals perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the area of the base. The lateral surface area is just the perimeter of the base times the height. Okay. So you're supposed to look for the lateral. So it's perimeter times height. So I'm going to look the lateral. The first thing you should draw is your base. What's the shape of the base? Remember, there's two sides. There's two sides, and then if you're going to show that that is your base. So looking at my shape and the triangle prism, well, there were triangle in there. She showed you that was your base. You draw your triangle. Okay, draw this guy. Here's my triangle. Now the measurements of my triangle is six centimeters. And this is five. Now, the big key, remember, it tells you your perimeter. You need to define your perimeter. That means you need to add all sides. So, if this side is five, that means this side has to be five. So, let's do our perimeter. Five plus five is ten, plus six is sixteen. So, my perimeter is sixteen. Now, when it talks about the height, that's the height of a figure. If I were to make this figure stand up, how tall is it going to be? If this is my bottom, because it's my base, and this is my top, so that means if I rotate it up this way, that means the height should be right here. That's how tall it will be, which is A. So my perimeter, we got a 16, and the height is 8. Well, that's when we calculate 15 times 8 equals 128, and since we're in centimeters, and we're talking about area, it's square. 128 centimeters square, which is G. Let's go ahead and look at number 9, and again, whenever you have prisms or anything that has to do with surface area, you draw it out. You draw that base out. You guys know that. Okay, number nine. Julie made 25 international long-distance phone calls to London last month. The scatterplot below shows the length and the cost of phone calls she made. So looking at my graph, we have the cost of the call in dollars and then the length of the call in minutes. You need to read the graph. So our question says, which conclusion is best supported by the scatterplot? Okay, so it says A, as the length of the call increases, the cost of the call increases. So let's see, if I'm increasing on the length, if the length's going on, is my call increasing? Let's see, more right here, that doesn't show that, so no. As the length of the call increases, the cost remains the same. So let's see, if my call's going this way, and my cost should be the same, so that means we should be staying at this level, is that true for all these other dots? No, so it can't be See, as the length of call increases, the, the cost decreases. 
So let's see, if my, if my increasing and my decreasing. Well, I have a cost over here, so no, that doesn't fit, it's not decreasing. And then my last one, there is no relationship between the length of the call and the cost. Well, I can't really see a pattern, there's no pattern, my dots are everywhere. Therefore, there's no relationship. See? Number 10. What are the slope and the y intercepts of the graph and the linear function shown on the grid? So, the first thing you need to see is what is my y intercept? Looking at my y intercept, that's your y equals mx plus b. This is your y intercept. That is where the line is crossing on your y axis here. So, I'm looking, my line is crossing between negative 1 and negative 2. So looking at my y-intercept, it says it looks at negative 6. It's not crossing at negative 6. Negative 6 is down here, so that can't be it. Intercept is at 1, negative 1. Well, we just said it's between negative 1 and 2, therefore it's not crossing at negative 1. At the y-intercept is negative 1.5, well, it's between 1 and 2. It could possibly be there, possibly. So we'll keep that up, oh, our option open. And again, it's saying our y-intercept is negative 6. Well, it's not crossing a negative 6. So we're left with our best choice of h. It's between negative 1 and negative 2. My best conclusion would be negative 1.5. Okay, so look at those y-intercepts. And it, it will really show it to you without having to do any math. Okay, let's go ahead. Eleven. The ball shaped like a sphere has a radius of 2.7 centimeters. What is the measurement is closest to the volume of the ball of a cube of centimeters? So it's talking about a ball and it tells you its shape. Its shape is a sphere. So here's my sphere. Draw it out. It says the radius is 2.7. So my radius is from the center to the end, which is 2.7. That's my information I should have drawn out. Now the volume for a sphere on your formula chart, which you should have drawn out, you should have got the volume of a sphere is where y equals four thirds times pi times your radius to the third power. So I just usually plug in four thirds times pi, which is pi is 3.14, times the radius 2.7 raised to the power of 3. So all you have to do is calculate it out. 4 thirds times pi times 2.7, which is your radius to the power of 3. And you would have got 82.406. But it says it wants you to round it. See, the measure to the volume. So I'm looking at it. I see that this should push it up to 01. So it's 82.41. My best answer that looks close to it is going to be 82.45. Okay, so I use pi as 3.14, so that's why I'm a little off right here. If you use the pi symbol um, on your calculator, which it should let you know um, to use pi or not, but this one didn't. So if you use 3.14, you still got the, the best answer of 82.45. But if you use the pi symbol on your calculator, and you calculated it out, it would have got, gotten you 82.448, where the 8 would push up that 4 to a 5, so that's 82.45, which hit it right on the dot. So, and depending on what you use, we, are, we always use 6.4, or you can use the pi symbol, and you know, whichever it tells you, want to use it, but this one didn't tell you use pi or 3.14, so I would use both to see See if you got, you know, your, your nearest answer. Okay, that's 1 through 11, again, for your homework tonight. So go ahead, get 1 through 11 done so you're not behind, and then we'll have more videos for the rest of the following.